Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I am so happy to have you here joining me for my first video. I am literally so excited to finally be able to film this. I have planned this channel for the longest time now since I think almost one year and finally we're here. The case we're gonna be talking about today is on the life and death of Cameron Todd Willingham, a man who was sentenced to death for the murder of his three children but most likely was wrongfully convicted. Cameron Todd Willingham, who everybody just called Todd, was born on 9th of January 1968 in Ardmore, Oklahoma. His parents divorced when he was very young and his mother abandoned the family completely so that he was raised by his father and his stepmother. It is not much known about his early life other than that his teenage years were quite troubled. He dropped out of school in just the 10th grade and he was arrested multiple times for assaults, burglary, theft and DUIs during his teenage years. In 1988, when he was 20 years old, he met the woman who would later become his wife, Stacy Kirkendale. Only one year later after them meeting and their first daughter Amber was born, and another year later, in 1990, Stacy gave birth to their twins, Carmen and Cameron. Unfortunately, the relationship between Todd and Stacy was embossed by constant fights between the couples, as well as violence and affairs. Despite all their trouble in their relationship, Todd and Stacy got married in October 1991 and the family moved to Corsicana, which is a small town near Dallas in Texas, to make a new start as a young family. During the time of their new beginning in Texas, Stacy worked mostly late nights in the bar which belonged to her brother, who also lived there, and Todd, who worked, used to work as a car mechanic before, did not have a job currently, which made the young family struggle financially. On 23rd of December 1991, around 10am, Stacy went out to buy some Christmas gifts for the children as Christmas was approaching the next day. Uh, by this time, Todd and all three children were still fast asleep in their beds. After some time, Todd woke up as he heard his children crying and once he woke up, he discovered that there was a fire in the house which quickly bursted throughout all the hallways and all the rooms. At the same time, a neighbor kid named Buffy Barber was playing in her front yard. She smelled the fire coming from the house next to her and she called out for her mother, Diane, who quickly dialed 911. Diane and her daughter went over to the Willingham's house to see what is going on and they found Todd outside of his house crying and shouting my babies are burning up inside, my babies are burning up, my babies are burning up. The fire department arrived shortly after and they were able to carry out Amber who was two years old at the time and directly started performing CPR on the little child. At the same time Todd um, tried to enter the house multiple times to look after his twins, to find them, to carry them out, but he was restricted by the fire department. Later that day, when Todd was already in the hospital, he was treated for smoke inhalation and for some burn marks, he received the devastating message that all of his three children died in the fire because of smoke inhalation. Four days after the incident took place, two fire specialists arrived at the house. One of them was named Douglas Falk. He was the assistant fire chief in Corsicana and he was a certified arson inspector. The other one was named Manuel Vasquez. He was the department fire marshal and he was confirmed to be a specialist for arson cases as well. After inspecting the house, they determined the fire to have started in three different areas of the house which was the hallway, the children's bedroom and next to the front door. They were certain that the fire was ignited by a liquid accelerant and the house was turning into a trap due to the three multiple places where the fire started. They also noticed that there was a refrigerator in the kitchen which was basically blocking an exit to the back door. So the refrigerator was blocking the back door. Uh, which was quite suspicious to them. Because of that, the two men were certain they were dealing with an arson case here and Todd Willingham was their only available suspect. 
On 31st of December 1991, New Year's Eve, Todd was brought in for questioning. Jimmy Hansley, who was a police officer at that time, was leading the investigation, having the two fire inspectors present as well. So they were asking Todd what could have possibly happened, how could the fire have started, and Todd claimed that they had a couple of space heaters in the house, but other than that he had no idea how the fire could have been started. He stated his love for his children and that he does not understand how anyone could ever think that he would do something to hurt them. The authorities, however, were not convinced with anything Todd had to say and on 8th of January 1992, Todd Willingham was charged with three counts of murder, the murder of his own children. It was quickly determined that in this case the death penalty would be on the table since they were dealing with multiple counts of murder. Since Todd was not able to afford his own lawyer, he was appointed two lawyers by the state, which were David Martin and Robert Dunn. The trial started in August 1992 after Todd rejected a plea deal. He was offered life in prison to avoid the death penalty if he would plead guilty to the crime. However, he rejected this deal with the words, I ain't gonna plead guilty to something I didn't do, especially killing my own kids. Vasquez, one of the fire inspectors, testified with his evidence at the trial and was convinced that Todd has set the fire intentionally and ran out of the house afterwards, leaving his own children to die. Speaking about some of the witnesses who came forward in the trial, one witness for the prosecution was Johnny Wapp, who was a jailhouse informant who shared cell with Todd while he was awaiting trial. Johnny himself was facing 15 years in prison for robbery and forgery and he claimed that Todd confessed to him that he was guilty of the crime. Another witness was James Grigson, who was a psychiatrist also known under the nickname Dr. Death. Grigson testified in a total of 167 capital tries and nearly all of them resulted in death sentences. Despite Grigson has never met Todd personally, he um, classified him as an incurable sociopath and this was more or less based on Todd's tattoos of a skull and a serpent and his interpretation of posters from Iron Maiden and Led Zeppelin in Todd's house. Like he had posters hanging on his wall and that's why Grigson classified him as a sociopath. Grigson has also been expelled from the American Psychiatric Association for Unethical Conduct and in my opinion he is not a credible witness at all but he was able to take the stand for the prosecution. Diane Barbie, the neighbor who called 911 initially, was also testifying at the stand as well as some other neighbors of the Willinghams. Todd himself did not testify in the trial and basically the only witness the defense had to offer was a former babysitter of the Willingham family who claimed that Todd would never do anything to harm his children in any way. So the trial lasted only two days in total which was probably due to the lack of witnesses especially on the defense's side and the jury as well reached a very quick verdict after only one hour of deliberation. The jury found Todd guilty of three counts of murder and he was sentenced to death by lethal injection. So Todd is now sitting on death row where he continues to fight for his life. He hires himself a new lawyer and he starts to kind of study the law himself a bit with the books he could get in prison and he started reading about what kind of appeals he can file and what kind of chances he would have to get free. After one year of the conviction, his wife Stacy filed for divorce and basically Todd never had any vis visitors to the prison except for his parents who came once per month. Due to his loneliness, Todd decided to join a program for pen pills in prison. So basically, um, like anyone could write letters to the prisoners and so maybe they will have a little bit of social contact. Through this way, a woman named Elizabeth Gilbert came into his life. She was 47 years old at the time and she was a divorced French teacher who was living with her children. Over the years, Todd and Elizabeth exchanged many, many letters and in 1999, it was the first time that Elizabeth would come to the prison to visit Todd in person. 
After the first uh, visit, they kept in contact. She came to visit him again and again, and they exchanged many, many letters. And after time, Todd gained Elizabeth trust, let's say. So she decided to, she wanted to help him to get out of prison. In the meantime, Todd was working on everything he was possibly able to do to try to appeal his case. In 2002, after spending already 10 years on death row, Todd's habeas corpus writ was denied without even a hearing. Following that, he appealed to the US Supreme Court, which was also declined without even hearing his case. Shortly after all the possibilities of appeals were exhausted for Todd, Todd received his tentative execution date, which was the 17th February 2004. Now his only remaining hope was to get clemency of the governor. The governor of Texas by that time was Rick Perry, a Republican who was known for carrying out a very high number of executions during his administration. So Todd was devastated at this time. He lost almost all of his hope. There was a little bit of hope coming back to him when Dr. Gerald Hurst, an acclaimed scientist and fire investigator, was contacted by Elizabeth. This happened in January 2004, only one month before Todd's scheduled execution. Hearst agreed uh, to take a look at the case pro bono and came back with a report which conducted no evidence of arson. Basically, the report conducted that the fire most probably was caused by a space heater or a faulty electrical wiring. Of course, this report was sent immediately to the Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles and it came back on 13th February 2004, four days before the scheduled execution. Unfortunately, the petition had been denied without any further explanation. After ultimately losing all of his hope, Todd started preparing for his final moments. His last wish was to be buried uh, next to his children's graves, but unfortunately this last wish has not been granted to him by his ex-wife Stacy. Stacy, by that time, she was absolutely certain that Todd was guilty of the crime and they did not talk to each other anymore at all, since she, basically she filed divorce from him. On 17th February 2004, Todd had his last meal. It consisted of three barbecued pork ribs, two orders of onion rings, fried okra, three beef enchiladas with cheese and two slices of lemon cream pie. Shortly before his execution, unfortunately, Todd received the last devastating message that his last minute stay of execution had been denied by the governor. So he spent some last hours with his parents before he was led to the execution chamber shortly before 6 p.m. Todd Willingham's last words were the following. The only statement I want to make is that I am an innocent man convicted of a crime I did not commit. I have been prosecuted for 12 years for something I did not do. From God's dust I came and to dust I will return, so the earth shall become my throne. His heart stopped beating at 6.20 p.m. and Todd Willingham was pronounced dead. If you are wondering what happened uh, to Elizabeth meanwhile, she has been in a car crash which led to a traumatic spinal cord injury. Even though this accident had happened actually long before Todd's execution, like many months before, um, she was stuck in the hospital by the time Todd was dying, so she was not able to, to be there and to spend his final moments with him. Until this day, Elizabeth is um, dependent on a wheelchair caused by this car accident. So you can see there are literally no winners in this case and it's very devastating. In the years following um, Todd's death, the case still received a lot of attention. So for example, there was Dr. Gerald Hurst, the scientist who already had a quick look at Todd's case. He dedicated now a lot more time to the case and he made the following statement in December 2004. There is nothing to suggest to any reasonable arson investigator that this was an arson case. It was just a fire. 
In August 2009, also Dr. Craig Baylor, who was hired by the Texas Forensic Science Commission to review the case, came to the same conclusion as Hearst before. The Texas Forensic Science Commission had uh, scheduled a meeting with um, Dr. Baylor to discuss his report on 2nd of October 2009. However, two days before this meeting could take place, Governor Rick Perry replaced the chairman of this commission and the meeting never took place. In 2014, new evidence came to light when Johnny Webb, who was the jailhouse informant by that time, um, confessed to actually have been lying in his testimony. He was forced to testify that Todd confessed to him in jail on killing his own children so that he, Johnny, would receive a lesser sentence for his crimes. In 2015, Prosecutor Jackson was accused of misconduct in court, providing false statements such as the testimony of Johnny Wapp, and he went to a two weeks trial in 2017 for this. However, the jury did not find him guilty. Earlier in 2014, the Innocence Project tried to file a posthumous exoneration for Todd, however, this one was rejected by the Texas Boards of Pardons and Paroles. So until this day, Todd has never been officially exonerated for his crimes and most probably this case will never have a complete conclusion. I find it incredibly heartbreaking and as I said earlier, there are just no winners in this case. To me it seems like that back in 1991, all people involved were just trying to rush the investigation, they were just trying to, to convict somebody and they just said, okay, it's arson, that's it. And the only available suspect, he went to die. However, there have been so many red flags in the whole investigation. Like, for example, the two fire investigators who delivered a report based on arson, which was later falsified by so many experts. Also, Todd state appointed uh, two lawyers who did not seem to make any efforts to bring any witnesses to the stand. Like they had only one witness, which was the babysitter. So basically that's it. That's the case of Todd Cameron Willingham. And I am extremely curious what you have to say. I would like to know what do you think. Do you think Todd has been innocent? Do you even think Todd has been guilty? We never know. Like we will never have the complete closure on this case. And other than that, this was my first video. I hope you liked it. Would appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel as new videos will be coming your way very soon. Bye guys!